Hello, today we are on to lesson seven in this set of lessons, and that will be looking at representing sound. Hey, now, now that Largo's gone, we, we can play the forbidden music. I heard that. So we've looked at characters and we've looked at images, and that means we're on to how sound can be sampled and stored in digital form. And it means we're going to look at the effect of sample rate, duration, and bit depth on both playback quality and the size of a sound file. Sounds are a series of vibrations that continuously vary and can take any value. This means they are analog. To store sound on a computer, we need to convert this continuous analog data into discrete digital data. To do this, we convert the analog data into binary numbers. The continuously varying sound wave is sampled at set time intervals. Each sample is a snapshot of the sound wave represented by discrete digital values that can be stored by a computer. At each time interval, the sound is sampled and the amount of vibration is measured and stored as a digital value. This is the amplitude for the curve at each sample. The sample rate determines the quality of the sound recorded. If we sample at a low rate, then we use few samples and there is a poor match between the original and the sampled sounds. If we sample at a high rate, then we use a large number of samples, improving the match between the original and the sampled sounds. So if you look over here, we've got a low rate sample, and you can see here that the low sample rate means we only have a rough approximation of the original sound. So it's not gonna be particularly accurate. Whereas over here, we've got the high sample rate. We're taking a lot more samples in the same amount of time, and we're getting a much more accurate representation of the original sound. Of course, a higher sample rate will result in a higher file size because we have more data to store. The bit depth is the number of bits used to store each sampled value. By increasing the bit rate, we can represent the data for each sample point more accurately and provide a better representation of the original sound. However, the more bits we use to store each data point, the larger the file size needed to store the data. So if we take a look over here at this very first sample that we've taken, you can see that we're store, we are sampling this at 44 kilohertz and we're using a bit depth of 16. So what we're getting here is a rough approximation of the original sound. If we move on one, you can see the next one, we're still recording at 44 kilohertz, but we've increased the bit depth to 24 bits. So now we've got a more accurate recording. If we were then to keep recording at 24 bits, but increase that sample rate to 96 kilohertz, you can see that we're getting a much, much more accurate representation of the original sound. It will sound closer to the original. Of course, this final image over here is also going to take up a lot more ones and zeros when we store it. The file size will be a lot larger than the original over here. The duration of the sampling is how many seconds of sound are sampled. If we sample more seconds of sound, then the more data that we need to store. So a longer duration means the file size will be larger. Let's have a refresher on calculating storage for sound files. Sound file size is the sample rate in hertz, multiplied by the duration in seconds, multiplied by the bit depth, multiplied by the number of channels. Remember, number of channels means, is it mono, one channel, or stereo, two channels. So if a 16-bit 100-second sound clip has a sample rate of 1 kilohertz in mono, then this is how we calculate the total file size. It's 1,000 times 100 times 16 equals 1,600,000 bits. We would then divide that by 8 to give us 200,000 bytes, and then we could then divide that by 1,000 to get 200 kilobytes, or possibly divide it by 1,000 again to give us 0 0.2 megabytes. Now obviously that's the raw size. You might add a little bit extra for metadata, depending on what the question is asking you for. 
Now let's summarize the last three lessons in this series. We've studied characters and how they're represented in binary for a computer. So we looked at ASCII, which is 7 bits per character, extended ASCII, which is 8 bits per character, and Unicode, which is 16 bits or more, depending on the version that we're using. We looked at images and how they're represented, paying particular attention to color depth and resolution. Color depth and the resolution of the image are what's responsible for how accurate and how good looking the image is, but are also responsible for the overall file size as well. And today we looked at sound. We looked at the sample rate, we looked at the bit depth, and we looked at the duration. And again, these are responsible for the overall file size, but also how close the digital sound is to the original analog sound. I hope these lessons are all useful for you. I'll be back soon with another one. Good luck with your studies.